Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with the newly added ServiceNow Activity Packs. Let's start with an overview. Using ServiceNow workflows, admin can push information about devices, networks, and threats to Infoblox. This integration gives visibility into devices quickly in a single place for network and security ops teams. This integration also allows you to quickly and automatically handle threat IPs and host names in the Infoblox appliance through ServiceNow. Now let's take a high level overview of a workflow. Do note that all workflows can be edited or changed to meet business requirements. First, a ServiceNow admin creates a new RPZ record on ServiceNow through some table. ServiceNow workflows checks if the requirements were met to start the new workflow to add an RPZ into Infoblox. Infoblox adds the record and ServiceNow checks if the record was added. When an NX domain is returned, we know that in this case, it's being blocked. Information is then pushed forward and the admin is notified about the incident. Now let's see that in action. Here, from ServiceNow, I'm adding an RPZ record to Infoblox to block the bad site. Once I hit start, we can see the workflow that is taking place with adding a record to block all subdomains of this bad site. And once the record is added, the workflow will continue. When we head over to Infoblox's user interface, we can see that the badsite.com subdomains record was added. Now the workflow is testing to make sure that the record is working correctly. Sure enough, it's working. We can test it ourselves to confirm. And sure enough, when we run the dig command, to a subdomain of badsite.com, the record is blocked by Infoblox, which we can tell with the information in the additional section. Now, the workflow continues, and we will now start to block the record badsite.com itself. And once it's added, the workflow will continue. When we head over to Infoblox side, we can see that the record is added. Then one last time, the workflow will check to make sure the record is being blocked. Sure enough, the record is blocked and the workflow is ended. Now we can test it ourselves one last time to confirm. And sure enough, when we run the dig command to badsite.com, the record is blocked by Infoblox, which we can tell with the information in the additional section. Now let's see how to set everything up and see a working example. First, to download that Infoblox activity pack, go to System Applications, Applications, and select the Search ServiceNow Store. In the ServiceNow store, search for the Infoblox and select Infoblox Activity Packs, and then click Get. Do note that you will need to log in with your credentials. In this case, I already have it downloaded. So heading back to ServiceNow, once you have it loaded, go to Workflow Editor under Orchestration Workflow Editor. And here, you will have a workflow called Infoblox Create RPZ Record 2.0. Here, you can choose to test the workflow with their Infoblox appliance by inserting the values into the Start Workflow window. To edit which table the information is being pulled from, you can go to the drop-down menu on the top left and select Properties. Here you can see that Global is selected for the table, which allows you to manually add the information. However, manually entering values each time probably isn't what you're looking for, so some configuration is needed depending on your needs. For this demo, I've already checked out a workflow and edited it. In this case, we can see that I'm not in the correct scope. If you find yourself in this issue, go back to the home screen for ServiceNow, and at the top, select the scope which you need. When editing the workflows, there are some important concepts to remember to get started using the workflows and activities quickly. Inside the inputs, you'll need some credentials. Go to Orchestration Credentials, and here we can see two types of credentials, one for REST API calls and the such, and one for SSHing into a device. For REST API credentials, click New, then Basic Auth Credentials, and add the name of the password and hit Submit. Then, simply right-click and select the copy of the sysid of the credentials needed. And then, just copy the values of the REST credentials for all the activities and workflows. For SSH credentials, click New, then SSH credentials, 
and here, enter the username and password, but this time, additionally add a tag. The tag name doesn't matter, so long as it's unique. Then once you hit submit, simply copy the tag of the SSH credential and add it to the values that request SSH credentials for testing. Next, in order to use variables inside ServiceNow, there are two types to remember. First is workflow, which can use the inputs from the input table that we just saw how to enter credentials for. A simple way to add them is to go to the data tab on the top right and click and drag the variable into the input field. In this case, we have Infoblox server. So we will drag the Infoblox server over so you can see how it works. The second variable is current, which allows you to pull data from the table that triggered the event. In this case, I'm pulling data from the short description. To see which table you're pulling data from, again, go to the drop down on the top left and go to properties. And in this case, incident table is the table. To see which values are available with the incident table, like short description, you may check the ServiceNow table chart. However, I found that some names are inaccurate. To get the actual value names, you can use a curl or any other REST client and grab the test record to see all the values. In this case, I'm getting records from the incident table, and here we can see all the available records. Here, we can see the short description that I showed earlier, and you may use any other values as well. Now let's see this working. First, under Data Management, DNS, Response Policy Zones, we can see that there are no entries. Then, going to the Instance table under Service Desk, Instance, I can create a new instance and inside the short description, I will add example.com. Then heading back to Infoblox, we can see that after hitting refresh, that example.com was added to the list. One final thing to know is that you can add activities from the Infoblox Activity Pack by clicking and dragging them into the screen. Then you may modify it however you like, including deletion. Now before you go, Here's a list of what's available with the ServiceNow Infoblox Activity Pack. With this, you're able to create, delete, and get RPZ rules, ADP rules, A records, Quad A records, and many more. This includes an SSH activity, which allows you to SSH into any device that allows for it, and create a dig command, which will return a response. This activity pack also comes with two preset workflows for you to start using right away or for you to have a reference on how the workflow should look. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of the other experts at Infoblox on the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day.